This is Hatcliffe, a squatter's camp 15 miles north of Zimbabwe's capital city of Harare. Zimbabwe has been ravished by political corruption and has been in economic decline since the 1990s, leading to its ranking as one of the poorest countries in the world. Reasonable estimates put the country's GDP around $600 a year per capita. Put simply, Zimbabwe no longer has an economy. In 2017, the formal unemployment rate is quoted to be as high as 95%, with the majority of people employed in the informal economy, which is characterized by low wages, poor working conditions, and little or no social security. With limited jobs to go around and no help from the government, even with skills and the will to work, many Zimbabweans are left in a cycle of poverty. I'm with my new friend Imos, and we are walking. Exactly. We're walking over to his house, and he's going to show me inside his house where he lives. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I want to do. <laughs> so we're inside of Amos's house. Yes. Tell me, tell me about your your life a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I've got a, a wife and uh, two daughters. Right now, I'm not working. Not working. Yeah. My wife is a vendor. She sells a um, little of meal, meal, yeah, tomatoes, whatever. She, uh, she's a vendor. That's how I'm. I'm just surviving. It's like time is hard because I must look after the, this family. But my wife is now just uh, helping me to do everything through that. Hmm. I need to work. I'm a plumber. Okay. I'm a gardener. I'm a scouter in ranges. Mm -hmm. mm. That's a lot. Mm. I, I, I can just train animals like um, from the beginning of the house animals, the wood animals. I can. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to work. <laughs> I'm not going to work. <laughs> yeah. But I can do them. Mm -hmm. Those things I can do. But right now I'm just um, sitting here doing nothing. Mm -hmm. There's too many, yeah, too many things that I can just mm -hmm. try to do help myself. But right now there's no way. Mm -hmm. Just living like this. Selling tomatoes, hear me? Through my wife. Serious. Mm -hmm. That's, that's uh, my query to people. Say, if I need a help, just help me. Or else give me a job, then I can work for my family. I was just learning that one of these huts behind me cost about $10 to have built out of grass. There's a guy uh, building one right now. I was able to go in and actually see him uh, repairing uh, one of the huts.
There is a unique setup in this particular camp. Part of the land is government owned, which is where you see the $10 grass huts and the less permanent shelters. But just a few yards up the hill is another plot of land that is privately owned. And here you'll see permanent housing built more methodically with wood and some out of concrete block or even brick. From a Western perspective, these two areas may look identical, but for the locals, they couldn't be more different. The people who live in the squatters camp don't own their land, which means they can't build permanent living structures and they can be kicked out at any moment with no notice. The people who live up the hill, however, live in permanent structures and own their own land. And in order for somebody to secure a spot on this privately owned land, they need a down payment of around $300. Once the down payment is paid, they can begin building and farming on the land, with an agreement to pay monthly until they've paid a total of around $3,000, in which case they will own the land free and clear. This is the goal, the dream. Most people living in the squatters camp are doing everything they know to do to save up that $300 so they can build a permanent home for their family to have the peace of mind that they won't be kicked out of their home. By any definition, this is still poverty, but to them, it's security, it's freedom. So all of this uh, corn has probably been drying here for two to three weeks. And now uh, the kids and Felice and I, we are shucking corn. Yes. And then they're going to take all of this corn kernels and they're going to go grind it up to the grinding mill. And the grinding mill. Yes. We're going to make a corn mill. Yeah. And then out of the corn mill, we can make salsa, mm -hmm. uh, oatmeal, or grits. Yeah. Mix it with flour, make cornbread. Mm -hmm. It keeps the kids occupied because we've been doing this for a good hour at least. Yeah. And then they actually use all of the cobs for uh, firewood. Mm -hmm. Daily life in the village consists of gathering water for the day, traveling to nearby wooded areas to gather firewood, washing laundry, cleaning, cooking, and finding ways to earn enough money to survive. Nice, it's good. 
tahu nih. So we're out here playing netball. It's basically like basketball, but once you get the ball, you uh, can't move and there's no dribbling. kids and I'm uh, teaching them some some tricks that I know and uh, right now I'm, I'm teaching them the uh, a coin flip that I know but I'm doing with rocks so we don't have any coins one two three yeah! Yeah! I thought this was so cute these little girls are using these cement tubes to play house they made uh, some doors show me your house can I see your house? <laughs> Who's home? Is anybody home? Oh. Hello. Hello. Knock, knock, knock. Anybody home? Oh, hi. How's your day going? <laughs> this your house? Yeah. How's your day going so far? Morongo. Morongo means white man. Oh, there's two of you in there. Two people home. Us uh, Morongo are practicing being African by balancing a bucket of rocks on our head. One, two, three. Okay. I have it. I'm walking. One, two, three! Which one? One, two, three, four. I don't 
Oh, oh, losing it. <laughs> you got it? Yes. Do you do no hands? Oh, there you go. Nice. They're chanting, fly the airplane around me. Flying the drone for all the kids, and whenever it comes down, they say "huya," which means "come, come, come." And whenever I get it down, they say "indo," right? Inda. They say "inda, inda, go, go." Many children spend their day entertaining themselves with little to no supervision. But those whose parents earn enough are able to send their children to the local school. But even the kids who have the opportunity to go to school sit in an overcrowded classroom with 60 children to one teacher. And sometimes that teacher is split between classes, leaving kids unintended. Still, the kids are eager to learn. Due to political turmoil, economic decline, and general unrest, 3.4 million people, a quarter of Zimbabwe's population, has fled the country as refugees. It is easy to forget the battles others are facing when our days are filled with our own struggles. But it is impossible for me to forget the people. We're all here together. We're all part of humanity. Don't forget the ones the world doesn't talk about.